Hello and welcome to this Keyshot Materials workshop. In this workshop I'll be focusing on the two material and going through all of its available settings. So you'll find the two material at the bottom of the materials library and if you expand this you'll see there are subcategories in there already of some predefined tune options. With these materials you can simply drag and drop them onto your model and you'll see it updating in real time on your screen. Like with all of the materials in the material library, if you double click on that part, it will then show you the parameters that are used to control those material options. So with your two material, it is a 3D block color that is then surrounded by a contour line. So the 3D block color has been driven by the color section. So if you know that the part is going to be a specific coloring, like we've got these blue and red parts within here, you can apply that via this setting. The contour color controls the line work around the outside. So again, you can manipulate what coloring you want that to be using this color block within here. Regarding the thickness of these lines, that is controlled by the contour width. Uh, so here with this parameter, I could increase the value if I wanted that line work to be a bit stronger uh, for this part of the model. Now at the moment, the contour width is being measured in pixels and that is the default measuring system. Uh, but if you'd like it to be measured in the same units as what the rest of the scene is, then under the advanced drop down, you can disable the contour width in pixels option. This will then change this parameter to use the same units as the rest of the scene. And it is probably recommended just to manipulate what that value is, as you may find that contour width takes over the entire model. With the contour width now being measured in the scene units, it means it'll be the same thickness regardless of the resolution of your final image. If you expand the contour width, you'll see there are two additional options within there. The first one is the outline width multiplier, and this affects the perimeter of that 3D part that it, the two material is applied to. And you can manipulate how much this line is going to be multiplied by that initial contour width. So in this case, it's going to multiply 0.2 by 2.5, and, and that's then the overall thickness around that outside. The option underneath is the part width multiplier, and if we tick this one, you'll find that some more lines appear between the individual parts that will use this two material type. And this has also been driven by this interior edge contour option. So if I disable that one, you'll see the effect it has. You'll see that the detailing of those parts has now disappeared, and the focus is purely on that that perimeter line work. If I enable that feature again, uh, you'll see that the detailing has come back into place and it's probably more suitable to how you want to represent your models. Now, if you find there is some detail that still hasn't quite come through on those interior contour lines, you can manipulate this contour angle. So the contour angle controls the number of interior contour lines in that tune sketch and the value determines the angle of the curvature where a line will appear. So if I decrease this value, you'll see that more lines appear uh, showcasing more of that detailing of those 3D models. Next, we have the shadow strength option. Now, at the moment, this is set to zero, so it is not paying attention to the HDRI environment that I've currently got within here. But if I increase this slightly, uh, we'll start to see there's some shading has come onto those models uh, where light may be um, not quite hitting it. Again, if you don't see any changes happening when you increase the shadow strength, do make sure you have the environment shadows ticked uh, if you're using HDRI lighting. And if you are using physical lights, such as area lights, spotlights, or IES, uh, make sure you have the light source shadows enabled. This will then give you a true representation of where those shadows should be. Next one down we've got is the transparency option. So if any of your parts are um, exterior casing and you need to show what's inside or there may be hiding parts of a mechanism that you want to be able to showcase uh, you can increase this transparency value the transparency only affects the solid color of the tune material it does not affect the line work so you'll still be able to see those sharp crisp lines around the outside and if you find those contour lines aren't quite as crisp as you want uh, you can increase the uh, contour quality within there to make them a bit smoother. The lower this number, the more sketch-like the contour lines will look. So there are all the settings that you can do 
from the material edit option. Uh, there are other settings you can manipulate within the material graph itself. So I'm just going to open up that material graph and then just reposition the model so you can see it. And one of those things you can change is how the shadow looks. Now you will find this material type already in the material library itself, but for the purpose of this workshop, I'm just going to show you how they created it. So I've brought in a brush texture into the material graph and I'm going to connect that up to the tune node, making sure it's attached to the shadow option. I'm just going to double click this texture node and then hit the letter C on my keyboard because then that enables the color preview for this texture. So any changes I make will be a lot clearer on the model. So initially what I'm going to do is just change the mapping type to camera. So regardless of the positioning of the model, we can see that that texture is still always going to be facing the same direction. And then just to make it a little bit clearer and how I might want the final look to be, I'm just going to start to manipulate some of those other size and mapping parameters uh, just to add in a, a more brush stroke effects. So when you're happy with the positioning, uh, select the node again and hit the letter C to disable that color preview. And then you can then see how it has affected the shadow options within the tune. So rather than it being a solid color, it now looks like I've just done some kind of coloring in with the pencil. So there come some of the different settings that you can use for the tune material. When it comes to when you might use the tune material in your design process, uh, one kind of key stage is at the concept point of the design process uh, where you may not want to focus necessarily on what materials are going to be a part of the model. You more just want to show off the design work. It's a, a quick material that you can easily apply uh, and you can showcase the different detailings within there. You can also use this material to help create any technical illustrations coupled up with the camera options. Uh, you can have some orthographic side, front and top views. But it also allows you to create those perspective views and maybe some 3D interactive elements uh, so that whoever is looking at this model is easy, can easily see detailing and positioning of all the parts within there. And that is the two material. Thank you very much for listening.